Hi guys, Wet Hair Dane here today. I just got out of the shower and I haven't filmed for ages and I need to do some filming. So I'm going to film today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about I... Bleh. I'm going to talk to you today about iRobot by Isaac Asimov. I almost said I Am Legend by Richard Matheson because it's the movie cover. This actually has very little to do with the movie. The movie really just takes the uh, three laws of robotics and kind of runs with it. So this is actually a short story collection. It's kind of, I would say, probably one of the most influential books in terms of uh, science fiction that deals with robots, really. Uh, there's one called uh, Rur, R-U-R, it's spelled, I don't know how to pronounce it, which uh, introduces the term robots. That, the, uh, that story is actually called Rossum's Universal Robots. Anyway, I digress. That's by Carol Capek, if you want to check it out. I'll put all the info in the, uh, in the, in the box below. I have actually read this before. This was a reread. I read it via audio. It was my actually my first time using Audible, um, which I may or may not continue to use. We'll see. But the audiobook was pretty good. I actually uh, filmed a review of this at my mum's house just before I went to Spain, and uh, th basically the footage didn't turn out great. So I'm going to have a go at redoing it, even though it's been about six weeks since I read it. Um, I also changed my rating for it as well. So stick around to the end to see what I gave it. Um, but yeah, this was for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon for October. And I think it was reread a sci-fi book or something. I don't know. I'm behind. I need to read November's one, like, soon. So, this is a collection of different short stories. They were published at different times. So, we'll start here with uh, Robbie. So, Robbie was first published in 1940. And Robbie is about, uh, basically, like, um, you know how for a, ch a child you have, like, a governess or a nanny or a nurse or something like that that, uh, you know, helps to raise the child? Basically, Robbie is a robot that does that, um, but the, the mother of the family doesn't like it, so she makes him take the robot away. The dad takes the robot away, and uh, they then try and kind of give her a robot dog to try and appease her instead, but she's having none of it. And what was interesting uh, about that, that was kind of, I think that was set in, uh, yeah, that was set in like 1997, and uh, they were saying by this point, that, like people around the age of 30 couldn't remember a time before robots so it's interesting to see that like obviously that's our past but that was his vision of the future uh, run around that was a good one it was uh this was the one i believe where it was set in a space station and um the robot that they had to help them the, these astronauts kind of uh, went a bit crazy lost the plot a little bit and um Basically, he, he the robot refused to believe that humans had created him because humans were so imperfect. How could they have created this this masterpiece, the robot, you know? And uh, and then there's a little twist at the end of that story that I won't give away because I do think you should read this collection, by the way. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's, it's an iconic collection. And actually, as I was going back through it, rereading like, re via audio, I could remember the stories, which is quite rare for me for a short story collection. They also tie together quite well, so it feels like halfway between a short story collection and a novel. Oh no, I see, so Reason. Reason is the third story, and that's the one where we have the uh, robot who doesn't believe that the humans created him. I think the second one in that story, um, they basically have to... They have to, um, they have to like m almost manipulate the laws of robotics. That's not quite the right word, but they have to, uh, they have to figure out a way that those laws can be interpreted to get them out of the situation. And there's a lot of that here. In fact, I will read you the three laws of robotics because that's how the book starts. So the three laws of robotics: one, a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Two. A robot must obey the orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. 3. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. We have a story called uh, Liar, which I believe that kind of introduces the concept of whether robots can lie. Actually, another concept that's explored in this book is um, like madness and madness in robots, and then how does that affect the laws of robotics as well? Do they still stick by them? Um, and there was one point, I think, where a robot was, the robot was basically drunk, you know? I think possibly the best one in this is called Evidence, and basically uh, somebody, somebody's running for a political office, and uh, the competitors convinced they're a robot, and so they run this smear campaign saying, you know, you could prove you're not a robot. If, if you're not a robot, you could uh, break one of the three laws of robotics. And this politician's going, well, I could, 
But I'm also a moral person, and I, I agree with these morals. I, I don't want to break them just to prove a point to you. Um, and they're trying to get hold of his medical records, so they have a warrant that they can search his house, but he points out, it doesn't mean you can search me, it doesn't mean you can x-ray me. And uh, it was just really interesting about rights, human rights, and robot rights, and... You know, could a robot be in a in a, in a in a place of political power? And it just it just asked some really interesting questions. The whole book did, to be honest. Um, it's I mean, it's good sci-fi and you know, gripping to read just for the stories, but also from like I guess from like an ethical p kind of perspective and uh, like a philosophical point of view, it does ask these really interesting questions. And I think they're arguably more relevant today with things like AI than ever before. So, for example, with uh, artificial intelligence. If AI-powered software makes a recommendation to a doctor, for example, the doctor follows that recommendation, the patient dies, who is responsible? Is the doctor responsible? Is the AI responsible? If the AI is responsible, you know, does that then responsibility lie with the programmers who created it, with the CEOs of the companies who distributed it? It's a real kind of grey area that we as a species need to, uh, need to figure out the answer to shortly. And uh, I think reading books like this is a, is a good way of... Uh, you know, keeping that debate going. So yeah, possibly a shorter review than usual. I tried to keep it a little bit more concise and to the point because otherwise I film these super long rambly videos and never edit them. And um, I'm trying to get back to posting regular content. So like I say, this was my October reread for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. For November, I sh I'm supposed to be reading The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, but it's like the 20th of November or something and I haven't started, so I need to get a shift on. Um, but I've also, I've been uh, listening to The Highway Code as my audiobook. But that is by the by. Uh, rating time, I used to give this, I had this as 4 out of 5 on my Goodreads from when I first read it. This reread, I, uh, I, I boosted that up to 5 out of 5 and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that as a rating. And uh, yeah, definitely recommend reading it, especially if you're a sci-fi fan. So there we have it, that's what I thought of iRobot by Isaac Asimov. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.